Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Sides, and this course is Principles of Microeconomics, Chapter 7, Consumers, Producers, and the Efficiency of Markets. In this chapter, we're going to look at the consumer side of welfare economics, specifically willingness to pay. Willingness to pay, or WTP, um, if you will recall in Chapter 4, we define demand as a consumer's willingness and ability to pay. We will look at willingness to pay in this segment of the lecture. When you go out to buy, you generally have an idea of what you will pay for an item. Usually, you get that idea from a previous experience. This idea is generally the maximum amount you are willing to pay, WTP. This is your, again, WTP or your willingness to pay. You probably won't spend more than that amount if you are fiscally responsible, um, but you will pay less. And if you do pay less, you are very happy and satisfied with your purchase. In this example, we have four individuals, Anthony, Chad, Flea, and John, and we also have their willingness to pay for an iPod. In this case, we have Anthony who has $250. He is willing to pay up to $250 for an iPod. Chad is willing to pay up to $175. Flea is willing to pay up to $300. And John is willing to pay up to $125. When we look at their willingness to pay, there are some assumptions that we can make about the individual consumers based on their willingness to pay, but that's for another um, discussion. When we graphically um, represent consumers' willingness to pay, it will look somewhat like this. Here we have, um, when the price is 0 to 125, there are four individuals, all four, John, Lee, Chad, and Anthony, are willing to pay for an iPod if the price is between 0 and 125. If the price is between 126 and 175, there are three individuals who are willing to pay. That would be Anthony, Chad, and Flea. If the price is between 176, goes up to 176 to 250, then there's only two individuals who are willing to pay, and that would be Flea and Anthony. Once we get to 251 to 300 individual uh, dollars, excuse me, then only one individual is willing to pay and that's Anth uh, I'm sorry, that is Flea. And then if the price of an iPod goes up um, to $300 or more, then none of our buyers are willing to buy. And so when we take this um, table, remember from demand, price, and quantity, here's our price, here's our quantity, and we map it out on a demand diagram, what we have is here at 300, well, we only have one individual. At 250, we have um, one individual, two, uh, I'm sorry, two individuals. At 250, we have two individuals. At 175, we have three individuals. And at 125, we have four individuals. Now, the relationship between the demand curve and willingness to pay is that as you have individuals, in, um, as we map out the individuals, we'll get a stair-step type um, chart. But when you add multiple, more and more individuals, this stair-step stair smooths out, and what you end up having is the demand curve. As you can see here, that's Flea's willingness to pay. There's Anthony's, there's Chad's, and there's John's. And then if we were to add even more consumers, at some point, this would smooth out. This concludes, consum uh, this concludes willingness to pay by definition and the relationship between willingness to pay and the demand curve. I look forward to speaking to you in our next lecture where we talk about consumer surplus. Have a good day.